Hey, Francesca, how about I follow you home? No. <laughs> For safety. What? God, you are killing me with that booty. Mm. The idea that Kim Wexler is not only alive and well in the Breaking Bad timeline, but is in fact also a major player behind the scenes is an absolutely captivating possibility. Oh, you betcha. Take it easy. Rewatching Breaking Bad, there is absolutely no reason to believe she couldn't be there. That doesn't necessarily mean she is. It could be a case of clever misdirection, but that's what makes it intriguing, is the possibility is, as I see it, very real. Regarding the season opening of Saul's Home, a lot of people are debating whether that was a bachelor pad or whether there was any evidence of Kim living there. I don't think we can tell a whole lot from that because we're only shown glimpses. And who knows? Maybe the more Kim broke bad, the saucier she got. Remember, Saul Goodman is a character she is in the midst of defining right now. Who's to say Kimmy and Goodman aren't into hosting threesomes and orgies? Maybe that's why that booty was killing poor Saul. Hell, maybe even Howard gets involved in the action. I'm just getting warmed up. When Wexler is talking to the ADA with regards to their suspicions that Goodman is acting as a cartel lawyer, Kim referred to McGill as Jimmy twice during this conversation. And Suzanne calls him Jimmy at least a dozen times before Kim finally corrects her, insisting Suzanne refer to him as Saul, explaining he practices under Goodman now. Kim is internally differentiating Jimmy from Saul, Kim is basically having a sort of identity crisis when it comes to her husband. She loves Jimmy, and she sees him as someone fundamentally separate from Goodman, her creation and current work in progress. When talking with McGill, Kimmy starts defining the Goodman persona to her preferred specifications. Things like the type of car he drives, flashier the type of clothes he wears, where she's transforming him into a caricature of himself, where his law office should be, the type of clients he should be servicing, which still fits Kim's pro bono passion on some level. All of these suggestions she makes pertaining to the evolution of the Goodman persona are basically all on full display during the flash forward when Saul's home is being repossessed presumably at some point during the Gene timeline, or just before he assumed the Gene alias from our favorite vacuum repairman. Jimmy's problem in his relationship with Kim has many similarities with the relationship he had with his big brother Chuck, always looking to please him and gain his approval, even when doing so goes against his and his brother's own best interest. Chuck was mentally ill and in need of help, but Chuck wanted to leave the hospital and go home, Jimmy wanted to please Chuck and gain his approval, and Chuck never got the help he needed. Will he redeem himself and not make the same mistake? That is, in large part, what this season boils down to with regards to Kimmy and Jim, and the relevant precedent is Jimmy's relationship with Chuck, where in my opinion, Jimmy failed Chuck and he failed himself. History is repeating itself now with Kimmy Corleone. Saul knows they're going too far with this ruthless plot to destroy poor Howard. He's playing along because he wants to support Kim, but on some level he knows what they're doing to Howard is wrong. Supporting evidence for this is building. First, the original discussion about Kimmy's scheme, where Jimmy notes that Howard doesn't deserve this. Then Jimmy shows reluctance when Kim brings it up again, and he asks if they are really still doing that. Then most recently, when questioned by Huell about why he does what he does, Goodman sells him some two-bit pitch about doing the Lord's work, Huell ain't buying it, and Goodman himself looks as if he has no good answer to that question. For the longest time, it looked as if Kim Wexler was the only thing keeping Jimmy McGill from going all in on Saul Goodman. But now Kimmy is actively sculpting the creation which will later become Saul Goodman as we knew him in Breaking Bad. 
And ironically, the thing that seems to be giving Jimmy hesitation from going all in now is the fact that deep down he knows poor Howard does not deserve to be ruined. Much like he previously knew that getting Chuck the help he required was probably the best move. It's interesting because last season Goodman threw a couple of old bowling balls at Howard's car and he sent a few ladies of the night to embarrass poor Howie. And these were his actions after Howard offered him a job at HHM. It's also interesting because Howard and Jimmy probably have more in common than they realize. Because I imagine Howard was once just like Jimmy, in the sense I suspect Howard had that desire to please and seek approval from his old man before and after Howard himself became a name partner at the firm. But now Kim is all out to ruin Howard, and Jimmy knows this is scorched earth, and not a mere career setback on the horizon. I hope and suspect that Howard will provide stronger resistance than the slipping couple is expecting. I'm just getting warmed up. The shift in dynamics between Kim and Jimmy became apparent late last season when Kim first described her scheme to go after Howard. It's being reinforced again here, where even Jimmy had no idea what to do when first given news about the ADA's belief that he is involved as a lawyer for the cartel. He asks her what to do, and cool as an assassin, she breaks it down plain and simple, while strongly implying exactly what it is she wants him to do. Do you want to be a friend to the cartel, or do you want to be a rat? Her insightful instincts into the situation have seemingly surpassed Jimmy's, and in a situation where the stakes could never be higher. That brings us back to whether Kim is indeed some type of big player behind the scenes in Breaking Bad. I think there have been some pretty strong-handed hints suggesting such. From the opening with the repossession, to Kim creating the new Goodman persona, and training Jimmy to become her new scheming puppet. And then the way Kim differentiated between referring to him as Jimmy and Saul during her conversation with the ADA, we now know beyond any shadow of a doubt that Kimmy was very instrumental in inventing Saul Goodman as we see him in Breaking Bad. The big question is, is that all it was? Did she just help firmly shape who he'd later become and that's it? Or is she still there working with him, molding and fine-tuning him behind the scenes, where he is all too eager to please her and gain her approval? We have the precedent with Chuck. And if anything, McGill's devotion to obtaining Kim's approval is a far stronger driving force. We also know, in the end, Goodman is an irredeemable scumbag. So if the key to Jimmy McGill's redemption is not making the same mistake with Kim that he previously made with Chuck with the overeager desire to please, we know he fails. The tangible evidence is right there in Breaking Bad. Now maybe Kim isn't there in Breaking Bad, and they're just showing the strong role she played in his transformation. Maybe. If it is a red herring development, it's a good one that keeps the question alive where the possibility alone remains captivating. But I have a damn hard time believing they're giving us all of these hints just to say Kim helped shape Goodman. We already kinda knew that. I believe Kimmy Corleone is indeed a big player behind the scenes in some capacity in Breaking Bad. And as a final thought, consider the words from co-creator Peter Gould. Quote, I think by the time you finish watching Better Call Saul, you're going to see Breaking Bad in a very different light. What better represents that sentiment? Kimmy helping build Goodman and not being around after? Or Kimmy developing Goodman and pulling the strings behind the scenes in Breaking Bad? I know what answer works best for me. How about you? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. Hey, Francesca, how about I follow you home? No. <laughs> for safety. What? God, you are killing me with that booty. Mm. I'm just getting warmed up. You see, I've been through the desert on a horse with no name. It felt good to
to be out of the range. There's holmium and helium and hafnium and erbium and phosphorus and francium and fluorine and terbium and manganese and mercury and molybdenum and magnesium, dysprosium and scandium and cerium and... Yes, yes, he is. Yep. Who is this? That, my friend, is Albuquerque's public enemy number one. I'm just getting warmed up. God, you are killing me with that. You're done. You are done.